those of you who are uh, coming on and spending time with us, we are in the book of Galatians. We are still in Galatians chapter 1. And so those of you who are on the replay or going to be watching on YouTube, I invite you to share the video out. Even those who are watching in our group, I will be putting the message in YouTube form to be shareable outside the group. And I believe they don't see the comments on YouTube. I believe it's separate from the group, which is nice. So share these broadcasts out. I will make them shareable. And uh, I think I'm going to start going live on YouTube along with Facebook here as well. And so the Bible says to go out into the highways and the byways. And I believe that these channels are those ways. And so Galatians chapter 1, we covered a lot yesterday. I didn't think that we did almost an hour in conversation and in prayer. But I do believe a lot was released yesterday uh, when we prayed. In fact, we felt the power of the Holy Spirit in movement. And he was in a um, whirlwind form. I felt it on my end. People felt it on their end. And I want to reiterate a couple of things here. Tracy, welcome. Good morning. We, we really missed you last night. I pray that you had a really great night's sleep. Um, yesterday in our ISOM school, we had mighty moves of God. There were uh, healings for tooth aches um, within the wisdom teeth. It was really cool. People were learning how to operate in the prophetic, how to utilize the gifts of the Spirit. And so... It was just a really, really great time, and uh, you were missed. And when you watch your school, you will you will get caught up, and we will be engaging you next week in what we had done this week. So, um, God bless you. God bless you, Melena. Welcome, Bestie. So, yeah, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna dive right in here to Galatians, we're going to stay in chapter 1 and we're going to pick up with verse 11. Now, the book of Galatians, we have Paul going to Galatia, which is now the modern day Turkey. And he is going to, actually, I'm, I'm not saying he's going there. But he has sent a letter there. Let me correct myself because he's not traveling there. He's sent a letter. And he's reminding them of the essence of the gospel message. Salvation by faith alone in what? In Christ Jesus. It was non-negotiable. It was the great truth that Paul would never compromise nor would he liquid down, water down the grace of the gospel of Christ Jesus. His ministry here, why he came and what he came to set us free from and liberate us from. That we do not obtain salvation through works, but we obtain them through the faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. And after establishing these churches in Galatia, Paul heard reports that the Galatian believers were influenced by the Jews who claimed that Gentiles would need to be circumcised and that they had to now keep the law of Moses in order to be saved. And that was a very serious threat to the authenticity of the gospel message, and it would be a serious threat today. We don't have to do anything other than repent, turn away from sin, accept Jesus as Lord of our life through faith alone. And so I feel like that's a pretty 
that's a given if you're on here most of you are pretty seasoned in the gospel if you're not justification by faith alone not works we are freed from legalism of the old testament teachings and so he is pleading with these people because when they return back to legalism you basically become a slavery in your life you become it becomes a form of slavery in your life contending with the gospel defending the gospel message at all costs we're going to read on chapter 1 verse 11 I want you to know brothers and sisters that the gospel I preached is not of human origin I did not receive it from any man nor was I taught it rather I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ Christ. <laughs> I just love this. I just love this because Paul, an apostle, was called by God and not by any man. He was called by God personally and not by any man. And he was taught by God. And he actually pulled himself away for a few years before he went out in ministry, before he even introduced himself to the other disciples. And he spent some time getting educated and learning. And I would just love to know what that had looked like for him. Because he says, I didn't receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. I received it by revelation from Christ himself. Christ who had died Okay, and, and he rose again, came back to teach Paul. First, he had his road to Damascus experience where he met Jesus face to face. And Christ asked him, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? This is how Paul met Jesus. Paul was killing Christians. He was doing horrible things to God's people. And Jesus, Jesus uh, comes to him from heaven and says, why are you persecuting me? And the Bible says, when you hurt my people, you actually inflict Jesus himself. There, there is something that happens where we take on the burden of Christ when we are persecuted. It's like re-persecuting him over and over again. And Jesus comes to him on the road of Damascus and asks him, why are you doing this? Why are you persecuting me? Now, Paul was, um, a, a, um, Paul was a Pharisee. And what I want to say is he was, he was a believer he was a true believer and when Jesus actually came and stepped and walked feet on earth and met the disciples and put the word out and and he was affiliated with all these people had who had seen him and he walked in miracles Paul came along after Jesus was here after after Jesus I guess what I want to say is he wasn't part of the 12. He was here, but he wasn't part of the 12. I don't want to confuse you, but he's introduced later. Let's say that. He's introduced after Christ's resurrection. Some 30 years, actually. So this is some 30 years after the cross that he has his road to Damascus experience, and Jesus actually blinds Paul he blinds him and he loses his sight and I'm not going to go you know all through that story but many of you know it and he does get his sight back but he had to blind him physically to get him to see spiritually what he was doing and as a result by revelation it, he doesn't say even by by being blinded by Jesus. He says he received his preaching and the words that he gives by revelation from Jesus himself. 
verse 13. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, which is what I just shared with you, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to distort to destroy it. He thought that he was doing right. He thought that what he was doing was what God would want. He thought that this church of God was against the Jew, Juda, Juda, Judaism um, keepings. He thought it was against what they were being taught, against their keepings. And so this is why Paul persecuted the church so heavily. In fact, he's the one who initiated the first martyr, which was Stephen, uh, for Christ. Stephen was the first martyr for Christ after Christ died. And Paul sat and watched the people stone Stephen to death. And that in itself was an incredible story where you see that Stephen said to God as he was being stoned, forgive them for they know not what they're doing to me. So he actually forgave Paul while he was being stoned to death and saw the heavens open and the heavens received the spirit of Stephen. So there was a forgiveness over Paul. I just find that incredible. All of these stories that lead to Paul's revelation of Jesus, I feel, have a significant role in play, um, even on his encounter with Christ. You know, the power of prayer, the power of breakthrough, the fact that a man who loved Jesus, um, he was serving the widows. He, it says in the Bible that Stephen was actually a man of uh, great stature with the Holy Spirit. And he was very much filled with the Holy Spirit, spent much, much time with God, and he was serving the widows at the time of his stoning, and he releases Paul from having him stoned. And he says, God forgive them for they know not what they do. The same words that Jesus spoke from the cross himself to release us. Mary Jane, welcome. It's nice to see you. God bless you, sis. I miss you, and I, I miss Jimmy. Please say hello um, to him for me. And so, uh, let's see. Um, I had just um, circulated back and lost my place. Okay, Galatians chapter 1, verse 13 in this letter, Paul reminds these people, remember where, where I was and where I was from. Remember that my previous ways and how I intensely persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Paul was a leader. He was a leader um, in the Jewish faith. He had much power in the community um, to do what he did. And he's reminding them, look, I introduced you to the gospel message. You know where I was from. You know how it changed me. I feel like I need to turn this music down. Hold on one moment. Because on my end, I feel like it's kind of loud. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Paul was teaching how to minister to people who are falling back, who are backsliding back into legalism. And Paul is reminding the people in the book of Galatians that remember where I was from. Remember how I received the revelation right from Jesus himself, that he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And nobody gets to heaven except through Christ and through Christ alone, not by works. And he's reminding them, look, I need to take you back to the beginning here where you first got it. And he says, remember my status. Remember my stature. Verse 15. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace was pleased 
to reveal his son in me so that I may preach him among the Gentiles. My immediate response was not to consult any human being. Wow. This is a teachable moment for us that when we feel that God has set us apart for an assignment, that we need to sit with God first and we need to channel that revelation in our spirit. When you have been called or you have been asked to do something, you've asked to confront a region, you've been asked to confront a church, you've been asked to confront a friend, you've been asked to go on a special assignment regarding the protection of the gospel of Christ Jesus, you receive this in your spirit and now you have to sit with it, you have to marinate in it and you have to make sure that what you're receiving is correct you have to have a dialogue i should say or a dial a dialect going back and forth with you and the father and you receive more of a revelation from him confirming confirming the assignment then and only then you go forth to men and maybe with other fellow Christians who are walking in the spirit of God, not just any friend, but who are walking in the spirit of God. You then can come to them in prayer and supplication and tell them what you have heard from the Lord and, and discuss it together. And the mouth or two or three witnesses, the Bible says, a matter is established. So once you feel you've heard it, and now you take it to the mouth of witnesses. But this is sharing with you how serious Paul is. And he says, look, my Lord has set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Just like the Lord has set you apart from your mother's womb and you have been called by his grace. You have not been called to follow in the tradition of your parents. You have not been called to follow in the tradition um, that you currently knew. You have now been informed by the true gospel message. And it said that it pleased to reveal his son in him. Just like it is pleasing to God to reveal Christ in him, the hope of glory through you. And you go on, and you might think that you are not a preacher or not a teacher or part of a fivefold ministry, but you do know the Word of God. And your immediate response is, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this privilege to share your gospel message with a friend, with a family. Thank you for the revelation that I have received from Jesus to open my spirit and know the Holy Spirit who is leading me and guiding me in all my ways. Verse 17, I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went to Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus, which is where he first found Jesus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas, and stayed with him 15 days. Now Cephas, just so some of you might not know, that is Peter. Peter who walked on the water. Peter who denied Jesus three times. Peter. And it says he stayed with him for 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I am writing you is no lie. So he's basically giving him a giving the Galatians a resume. He's giving them a resume that he went and look, I met Peter. I didn't see any of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. And I assure you before God that I'm writing to you is no lie. This again is telling of personal testimony. How your personal testimony is the testimony of Jesus. Your personal personal testimony of encounters that you have been having at meetings, miracles that you have been seeing, preaching that you have been hearing, how God has been showing up and transforming you from the inside out. These this is all <coughs> 
<clears throat> you are building a resume with the spirit of the living God. Some of the resume that you are witnessing and building, whether it's a personal testimony of what is personally happening to you or to others around you, um, you could be journaling because once you get moving with the Lord, there is much that happens in one's life and we actually begin to forget some of the things that he has done and what we have been witnessing. And so Paul was giving his resume with, with the Galatians about his past with God, without God and with God. Verse 21, then I went to Syria and Celsia. I was personally known to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praised God because of me. I like in this in this chapter, I want to reiterate something here because this is so important. I want to take you back to verse 16 where it says to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. And, and he had said, he had basically had said that God taught him not any human being, not flesh and blood. And he's applying, usually, with the implication of humans, they have a weakness or an ignorance in the gospel message. And Paul was saying, look, I learned it straight from God. This is the importance. I just want to say, church, the importance of learning from the Holy Spirit when you read the Word of God, when you sit with the Word of God. The Bible says that my sheep know my voice and they know me. The Holy Spirit will teach you the word of God. You're, you don't have to only listen to messages and only listen to sermons. It's great to hear the word of God through somebody else's revelation, but it's even more exciting to get your own revelation. In fact, um, revelation is one of the gateways and doorways of the access of your spirit. If you attended uh, the Ascension classes, to have a revelation is a gateway into your spirit that actually creates, um, I don't want to use the word sanctification, but it kind of is a sanctification when you receive the word of the Lord and you get to know him personally on a deeper level through the finding of your own spirit with God and just sitting with him. Amen. Let me see here. I will. We miss you too. Good morning. I'm so sad I missed. I'm sad you missed too. Welcome Jade. God bless you, sister. I want to pray with you um, regarding your revelatory knowledge. I want to pray with you regarding how you respond to what you receive and how you sit with the Lord and how you're building your resume. <laughs> you're building your resume with Christ Jesus. I almost feel like we should write our resumes out. Wouldn't that be cool? To write, what would your job description be if you were to write a resume out and you were going to send it to the Church of Galatia? What would it be? Father God, I thank you for what you're doing in this book. I thank you for teaching us and reiterating that justification by faith, not in works, is part of salvation. Freedom, no legalism. 
Lord, I thank you that all this is done from a position of holiness, not law. Love, not law. If you love me, the Lord would say, keep my commands. Lord, I thank you that holiness is not legalism. Holiness is holiness. Lord, I ask that you lead the saints into divine truth of the gospel message. That they sit with you, that they obtain their own revelations with you. <coughs> I actually heard a word and the word was unnerving. And what this means is when you're reading the Bible, it is an unnerving experience because the translation, once it gets from the Bible to your spirit, you're having a hard time translating what God is really trying, truly trying to say. Let's just settle that now because this is a spiritual book. It's written by the Spirit. And let's pray for the engagement of these words to your spirit to flow in a synchronicity that you need. So, Father God, right now, I just speak the word synchronicity from the words that are written in your holy Bible to the spirit of man that is listening. Lord, these people want to be receivers of your word. They want to be a receiver of the revelation of who you are and what you are saying. Lord, I ask that you be the teacher in their private time. That they know who you are, that they feel who you are, that they read your word, not just on surface level, but on a spiritual level. I ask that spiritual doors be open, that the eyes of their understanding and that the ears of their understanding be sharp. I ask you, Lord, that you sharpen their swords with the word of God. And that as they read it out loud, that their faith is being built up. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, hearing the promises of God, hearing what God has to say in his Bible, in his holy word. What I would even do, those of you who are being taught the book of Galatians, put it on your audible Bible app and listen to the book being played to you. Listen to it coming to you instead of you reading it out loud that you would have um, great revelation doing that as you are remaining in prayer and listening maybe even speaking in tongues as it's being played to you these are all strategies that i use to engage with the holy spirit and ask him what is it that your people need to see why are you asking me to teach about this book and the big reason why is the Lord wants to disengage you from past preconceived preconceived religions that have been instilled in your mind and heart that cause blocks and walls from you receiving the true gospel message. God is tearing that down in the church. Praise God. Praise God. He is removing that. He is removing that. So, Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for chapter 2 that we will begin on Monday. And I ask you, Lord, to protect them and their steps and all their ways this weekend. I speak the Lord's provision over you, reminding you that you have received divine health, divine care, divine strategy that God is amidst you and that he is among you, willing, ready, and waiting in the mighty name of Jesus. Monday, we have a guest speaker coming who will be teaching on prayer. Um, and so if you are interested in coming, she is an intercessor and she's teaching on intercessory prayer. This will be the second class. Those who missed the first, that's okay. She is coming back Monday at 5.30.
okay? So if you're interested, please let me know so I can save you a spot and that you can also get documents. So God bless you all. I love you. Thanks for joining and tuning in. And I will see you all on Monday. And I think I might be doing a live broadcast tonight for healing. So if you know anybody who needs healing, I think I'm going to be going live tonight on that, possibly at 7 o'clock. But I will let you know because I'll post it. All right. God bless you. Have a great weekend.